reaction on, on tape to uh, what it was like, what your experience felt like up there on the stage tonight doing the show for the first time? It was very strange and very exciting and, you know, kind of a once in a lifetime experience because I've, I've never done a taping before. And, um, and to do it in that, that room, which is a room that has so much history, you know, and has so, there's uh, just so much energy in there from all the people. And you could see everybody because it's, it's a relatively small room. And uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. That can be scary in some respects, being able to see everybody in every detail, but in yeah. other respects it makes you really feel connected. Well, I like looking out in the crowd and seeing individual faces and seeing their kind of um, their responses, individual responses to everything. And some people, you know, are really excited and they're smiling, and some people look really serious and they seem very thoughtful and like they're trying to pay attention. And, and it's kind of exciting to see kind of the diversity of people and the way that they respond to the music. And yet we're all kind of um, grouped together. You know, we create this one weird community in a room for a short period of time and we're participating in this music and, you know, that's a very unique, special thing. My music uses personal history because I think that's the most reliable starting place. And, um, and I, I, I think that I, I use a lot of techniques from fiction writing that I learned in school, which is to use your own life, you know, in your art, because that's um, sort of a place that feels most real and most believable. And also, I don't really know anything else. You know, I just know myself and my own story and my own history. And, um, you know, and I find that a lot of a lot of my songs are are very autobiographical because that's where that feels very real and very true to me. And even when I'm writing about historical events, I find that I have a tendency to project myself and my own history and my own memory onto these historical events. And I guess it's a way of capturing them, and possessing them, and making them my own. I think my my writing process is very different depending on where I am and, and, and how I feel and what I'm going through and even what instrument I'm using. Um, but I think a lot of it is very sort of strangely so, sort of abstract and supernatural. You have no idea where it's coming from. It just it just sort of manifests itself as a melody or as a chord progression or as a you know some kind of weird tones you know and intervals and you hear them and you immediately your heart begins to kind of change and you feel like wow I'm you know I think that I'm tapping into something important and something really big but you have no idea what it is and then I think the songwriting process if you're sort of going to scrutinize it is um, is about sort of shaping that and observing kind of that sacred moment and getting to know it you know um, trying to have a personal relationship with that kind of sacred moment and trying to figure it out and then it slowly becomes clearer and clearer and more concrete and, and eventually it's a song and then it be then it's like you know has a verse and a chorus <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a trumpet solo <laughs> I do have some training training in music I studied oboe for a few years and I went to music school for one year and I learned enough from the oboe to learn the piano and to learn the recorder and the flute um, and I learned a little bit of music theory and I just picked everything else up just on my own and learned you know by ear by listening um, you know and s tried out the, the banjo and the guitar when I was in college and um, and I knew from the very beginning even before I could play anything that I that I had songs in me but I had no way of of, of um, kind of realizing them and so when I learned these instruments I think it it became sort of a mechanism for me to to kind of communicate these things, these songs. I'm not so sure that living in Detroit has affected my music or has had an influence on my music so much as it's had an influence on my life, you know, and it, a lot of my songs are about my life in Detroit. But I, I can't say that stylistically that I have a Detroit sound, you know. Uh, it doesn't sound very Motown, it doesn't sound very Detroit rock at all. Um, but maybe there's a bit of tension, you know, there's a bit of, of kind of an undercurrent, I guess, of, of, of kind of a little bit of distortion in a lot, in a lot of my music, but it's always in the context of kind of a very beautiful song. So I think I kind of reference Detroit every once in a while, but I have a hard time, um, seeing it as, as being 
you know, a real influence on you. It's an interesting way to put it, you know, that there may be a certain tension or electricity or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it that yeah. you, could, you could identify with Detroit. Yeah, I think Detroit is a is a very unique place because it's suffered so much and it's it's been in this sort of economic, you know, and cultural crisis for so long and yet there's there's still kind of a sense of hope there because there's so many people there who, you know, are really special people and I have a lot of family that are still there and I'm from there and I was born there and when I go back there my heart kind of sinks to see, you know, downtown and the state that it's in. Um, but I think it's just, and I think I, I have that kind of, that sense of hope and promise in my music, even being in the midst of like, of a crisis. Um, and a lot of my music is about that. Um, but I, because I no longer live in Detroit, um, and because I, I usually don't look forward to returning there, I feel like I, it's hard for me to feel a real closeness to it. You know, it's sort of like, it's sort of like a, you know, a step sibling. You know, your younger step sibling who you, you love as family, but you're always like, hmm, I don't know. You know, and you know that eventually you're going to come to terms and reconcile. But right now, living in New York City, you know, I feel like I have this. Unfortunately, I have this kind of weird condescension to a city like Detroit. And I go back home, I go back to Detroit, and I say, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, what's, what's going on with this city? And then I look, and I see all these buildings, and so many of them are empty. And, you know, it's really kind of sad. I think my music seems to be going in a more symphonic direction. And I seem to be working more and more with small orchestras and, you know, wind and horns and strings. And I've always used them in my recordings, um, but I don't know if I've always honored them completely. And so I see myself kind of doing more arrangements, more composition, and maybe getting out of songwriting for a while and actually doing like pieces, writing works, you know, I don't know, not symphonies per se, but so, you know, something out, something for an ensemble. Um, I'm not sure if I have the, really the, the skill or capacity to do that, but that's kind of what I'd like to do, you know, in the near future.